McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, all my favorite meals. But have you ever heard of the top 10 weirdest meals from ancient Rome? <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be kind of gross. Hold on to your barf bags, folks. Here we go. Number 10, stuffed dormice. This list is gonna be kind of tough even for a meat eater like me. Dormice are small rodent animals found in the old world like Europe and Africa and Asia. The old world, you get it. But just as common as your American house mouse. As it turns out, they were a favorite of Roman cuisine. Oh God, the horror. Sometimes they were even fattened up for a better meal. The recipe goes as follows. Cause I just know the folks at home are salivating at the mouth wanting to try this. Get your farm fresh dormouse, empty its cavity, and stuff it with an assortment of other meats and spices. Oh, beautiful, magnifique, and sometimes dipped in honey. Like stuffed jalapenos, except they're from hell. Mice are also known for not being the cleanest animals on earth, so I, I'm gonna hard pass on this one, brother. No thanks. Number nine, sea urchins. Uh, until today, I had never seen what the inside of a sea urchin looked like. I never did. That's when our most handsome boy Adam said, let me show you. Weird creatures, or at least to my North American palate they are. Very strange looking. Plus, when they were opening those bad boys up, it just looked like it was too much effort for a little bit of orange looking meat. Strange. Well, Romans being geographically located in the Mediterranean Sea found themselves around a lot of these bad boys and started to crack them open. I saw a technique with two spoons, but uh, well, I feel like a couple good bashes from a Roman sword ought to do the trick. All the things in this list, this is probably the least gross. Although, I gotta say, when you see a spiky thing in the water like that, and, and the first guy was like, we should eat this. It's so weird, why would you do this? It doesn't look edible. Number eight, flamingo tongue. Excuse me, I said, looking very cute at the computer researching this topic. Curb your tongue, internet, I said. I do not believe you. Alas, as cute and as blue and innocent as my eyes are, it was true. Romans were eating flamingo tongues. Ugh. Flamingos were associated with luxury, wealth. I mean, they are a strange color and it's close to purple. Romans love purple. And compared to the rest of the animal kingdom, it, it just doesn't really fit in. So yeah, sure, it makes sense. Well, the opulence in Rome loved flamingos and their tongues. My only hope is that they used all the birds. In my research, it said that poor citizens did when given the opportunity, but I just can't see the wealthy chopping tongues and that's it. Hors d'oeuvres, anyone? Number seven, garum. All right, if you're like me, you're a meat and potatoes kind of guy. When I was growing up, and I probably will be until I'm 80 in a senior home, that's just the way I am. Now, that being said, you can't have hockey pucks on the barbecue without her best friend, her luscious red lover, Heinz number 57 ketchup. Am I right, Chris? Oh, of course. Exactly. And yes, mom, I can tell the difference. Thank you very much. Well, meet the Roman ketchup that would be included at a lot of meals. Almost all of them, apparently. Garum. You take fish blood and fish guts and you pack a whole bunch of salt into it and stir it up until it looked like the forbidden tomato paste. You spread that bad boy out on a wooden plank, let it dry out in the sun for a week, and uh, bada bing, bada boom, baby, you're in Rome. You got yourself an apparent delicious condiment for every meal. Apparently, it was at a lot of meals, which is. Can't imagine that being very good. Salted fish guts, woof. Number six, ostrich. I like chicken just as much as the next guy. Matter of fact, maybe I like it more than the next guy. Any chef will tell you a fresh and properly prepared chicken goes a long way. You can make soup, stew, pasta, fried chicken, baked barbecue, roasted chicken, casserole, chicken burgers. I mean, she's flexible. You can do a lot of stuff and she's just so versatile. Now, the question is, is ostrich as flexible? I doubt it. They were an exotic bird even back then and apparently one emperor liked to shoot their heads with arrows for fun. That was part of the fun and games, yay. <laughs> okay, sometimes I can't believe the stuff I read. I'd say this is probably the second least grossest thing on the list, but I don't even know where to get ostrich. And honestly, to even try, I feel like a weirdo Googling that. Where do I get ostrich meat? I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Number five, lamb brains. Ooh, gross. Okay, lambs are not my favorite, but it's not that bad. I can see why people like it. The right preparation would yield a delicious and nutritious meal. Especially like roast it over a fire or something. I hear lamb's pretty good that way. I never had it that way, but I hear it's good. Lamb's brains, however, uh, I don't know, man. Remember that scene from Hannibal where Anthony Hopkins cuts open the skull from the guy from Goodfellas, and you get to see inside his brain and how a good fella thinks? A mafia joke. Oh look, there's a prefrontal cortex. Look at all those memories of beatings and extortion. Oh wow. 
All jokes aside, it's a gross scene, and I can't help but not forget about it when thinking of lamb brains. Well, the Romans, they loved them. Romans enjoyed lamb brains in a variety of ways, from cured, boiled, baked, oh, and more. One of Pickiest recipe even calls for lamb brain, eggs, pepper, and rose petals. So you never have too many rose petals. Number four, sow's womb. It's exactly how it sounds. I know, it's just another part of the animal, but some pieces, well, they just don't taste like the other do. They, they kind of taste worst. And when there's no yieldy Taco Bell, your options get stretched thinner than a contortionist who's out of a job and working street corners. So it makes sense to use all the parts of the animal, which I certainly hope they are. Well, I certainly wouldn't want any to go to waste. While not as common as other dishes on this list, you would find the sow's wound prepared with various spices and oftentimes a mixture of vinegar and honey. I don't know if those go together. I don't know if that... That's, and I think sow is, I believe is pig by the way too, sorry, I forgot to mention that, pig or a hog or something like that, sorry. Number three, giraffe. I mean, okay, such peaceful animals that just all necks. Is neck even that good to eat? I don't know, has anyone ever had giraffe before? I, I don't know. Another animal considered to be very exotic for the time, even back then, sometimes they would even find their way into the arena to fight themselves or other animals like lions. Kind of crazy. If you've ever seen a giraffe fight before, you know how brutal they can be. It's basically who can whip their neck back and forth, the hardest and the fastest. Scientists uncovering artifacts from an ancient restaurant in Pompeii found remains of a giraffe leg, so it actually may be more common than we think it was. Number two, jellyfish. Squidward. There's only two things I know about jellyfish. One, in SpongeBob, jellyfish produce a most delicious jelly, hence the name, and that goes on a Krabby Patty. Remember that episode? It's one of my favorites. Two, jellyfish got some nasty stingers, some of which can prove to be lethal, and no amount of Bear Grylls knowledge in urine can save you. He pees on them. I, I saw him do it once, and now I always remember that. If I get I to pee on it, but apparently that's not how you do it. Anyway, jellyfish were most likely not eaten every day on everyone's diet. However, there are mentions of it in some Roman writings. Picasus cookbook is the best collection of ancient Roman recipes to ever survive. It mentions of a jellyfish omelet as an appetizer. Although I gotta say, I don't know if jelly and egg go together like that. I don't. Chris is saying no too. I don't. That's that's a weird one. Number one, blood pudding. Oof. This one I know that we still eat today and some cultures love it, but there's just something about the blood for me, personally. I just, I can't get over it. I, I get lightheaded thinking about blood and the taste. Well, I'd, I think I'd rather suck on an iron girder. <laughs> well, I called the chief who was a world-class chef and he said, it ain't it. Roman blood pudding, or sausage, was prepared by mixing a very readily available resource of lifeblood and fat and oats to make for a very uh, loving, Tasty meal. I, oh God. Sometimes it was even put into sausage form with animal innards. Just cause, you know, go ahead, fry those, fry those bad boys up. Cook them up for me, you love the, oh, I can't even say it, it's so gross. Just go ahead and cook those bad boys up. It sounds great, I promise I won't puke at the dinner table. <laughs> That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too want to get together and make some blood pudding, yes, then come check out my social somewhere down below. I do all kinds of stuff, Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, all that stuff. You, I love you, you love me, it's how it works. I love you so much, guys, and I'll see you soon. Stay sweet, my little honeybees, bye. Sometimes gas just comes out of my bum. Uh, oh, that was from that was from the depths. Okay. Uh, oh, I just keep I just keep burping. A pig, a, a pig, I can't even say it. A pigasus, the the guy who wrote the last cookbook. I can't even say his name. It's so hard.